Hello and welcome to this Cali Fundamentals lesson. I'm very excited to be here with you today. And so we just got done working in the terminal and doing some things of that nature. And now we're really going to focus on the file system. So you may have been asking yourself, how do uh, I better understand the file system? How do I know where things are at? What do I need to understand? Well, the good news is in this lesson, we're going to give you a high level understanding of the file system, not just with Kali, but any Linux distribution that you're working with, and then a high level understanding of permissions. And so to get us started, let's touch on that color coding we discussed in the previous lesson. Now, there are a few other colors uh, as well as these, but these are the ones we wanted to touch on um, with respect to this particular lesson. And so remember blue when we were looking at the desktop folder and things of that nature in our root directory? Well, that represents a directory. So if you see blue in this color similar, uh, that's a directory. Green is going to be executable or recognized data files. Sky blue is symbolic link files. Yellow with a black background is going to be devices. Pink is graphic images. Red is going to be archives, zips, things of that nature. And red with a black uh, background is going to be broken links and things of that nature. So very easy there to kind of get into and as you work more with the file system and through the distributions Linux or otherwise you're going to see these colors a lot now let's jump into the file system so the Linux file system follows the file system hierarchy standard or FHS and in Kali's case this is no exception so here are a few key directories we want to touch on and we'll look at a high-level overview of this in a moment so bin is where you're going to see basic programs. And so as you can see here, we did a PWD and an LS of that bin folder or directory. And it's got things like LS and MKDIR. And essentially when we were running those commands, it's looking here for the directions on how that works. And so that's got basic programs and things of that nature in bin. And then root is where we had our desktop folder and where we'll have the, the basic uh, kind of images or anything that we save under our root account. It's going to be here in our personal files in that root directory. MNT is a temporary mount point directory. So if we mount any media or anything of that nature, it's going to be showing up here. Uh, Etsy is configuration files and things of that nature. As you can see here with Etsy LS, uh, what we found was um, like Ice Weasel and some other config files and profile information and whatnot is going to be located in that Etsy uh, directory. And then dev down here, we've got devices and uh, device files essentially that are going to be in this directory. Now, a high level overview of how the uh, file system looks is represented here. So we started off in this root directory previously. And then when we did that CD dot dot command, it brings us here. And from here, we were able to see all of these different points in the system, and then we can navigate down and drill down into each of those. And so as we discussed earlier with like bin, we've got essential user binaries here. So like the ls command and make dir and ping. And so as you enter those commands in the terminal, it's referencing here for those. So if you were to accidentally delete to delete like ping and then try to ping later, shouldn't work because now you've deleted the reference point in the binaries that make it work. And so same thing here, Etsy in here has config files. So like um, we've got different areas that you can see here that would have configuration files and things of that nature. SBIN has some essential system binaries, um, etc. And so as you're navigating through this and looking at the file system, you don't need to really memorize the layout. Just know that, you know, if you're having issues or you're troubleshooting something and it's command related or if it's configuration related, we'll get into like how to make some changes in the in the configuration files and things of that nature later. So for now, have a quick reference, be kind of aware of where things are at, but don't spend too much time trying to memorize everything. All right. Quick check on learning. So as we were discussing earlier with colors and things of that nature in these um, in the file system, which one represented a directory? All right, so remember, green was an executable, pink was a graphic image file, red was an archive file, blue represents a directory. So if you see, not sky blue, but that darker blue, that represents a directory like the desktop folder or something of that nature. And then configuration files are located in which directory? So remember, root was the personal files for us. 
Dev was our device files and things of that nature. Mount represented temporary mount points and things like that for media. Etsy is where we had uh, configuration files with respect to uh, this file system. So all of that is good, but you may be wondering, what about permissions and things of that nature? I mean, has that crossed your mind? I know it's crossing mine, so let's jump into a quick overview on permissions. Now, don't get overwhelmed. Just note that this may be a good quick reference. You can also, uh, you know, use Google and find some reference references that are, uh, you know, more your style. But looking below here, we did a quick ls dash. Uh, nope. See, I did a cap there. That's not right. We can't do capitals. La, and what that does is, is it provides this output in the directory. Now, when you're thinking of permissions, you've got zero to seven here and each of these numbers gets higher and higher as the level of permissions as we go through here. So when we get to number seven, that gives us read, write, and execute permission. Now, you'll notice that there are several groups of letters here. So don't worry about this on the end. It's either blank or D, and D means that you've got a directory. See that blue color there? On the end, when it's blank, it just means that it's not a directory, it's you know some other file type. So this is broken down into three sets, essentially here of letters and that's represented as user group or other now as you're thinking about these permissions i took the time here to kind of lay them out side by side so looking at zero it's represented as such execute would be represented in each uh, of these as an x now it could be different you can have any combination of these three uh user group and other and the permissions like you know in group could be read write execute i could have nothing in user and nothing in others. And so I can have a combination of any of these read, write, and execute. So when we're looking here at this particular uh, at deny, that means that there is read and write on the owner, so R and W, um, and then we've got just read on the group and nothing on other. So kind of keep that in mind. That's a high level dive into permissions. Use a reference to help you get through that. If you're thinking about inheritance and things of that nature, just think of it as going in this direction. So if you've got read, write, execute under other and everything else is blank, then no matter what the user or group, you should be able to read, write, or execute that file or directory. And so this is, a, is the equivalent of the Windows uh, kind of everyone, I'm my sorry handwriting here, but everyone essentially is in other, and then it's defined by group and then user, which is typically the owner and things of that nature. So go right to left when looking at these and defining what the true level of access is when you're working through those. But don't get hung up on permissions. Just know zero through seven, as we get closer to seven, that's like full permissions on any given area here, and it's broken down into user, group, and other. So with that in mind, let's do a quick check on learning. Which number provides everything, read, write, and execute permissions. All right, so remember, you we didn't go through the numbers entirely. Two is write, four is read, six is read, write, which you should have caught was read, write, and execute, which is all three, everything that we can do, and that was represented as a seven. Now, with all of those things in mind and everything that you just learned, what did we pick up on? What should we remember? Well, we looked at colors, the blue, green, pink, red, directory, executable, graphic image, archive files. So those colors are important as we navigate through the file system and we're understanding what things are and what they mean. We did a basic overview of the file system layout in the file hierarchy standard and a high level overview of permissions zero through seven. So I wanna thank you for your time again today. We've learned so much together and I look forward to seeing you again soon.